Hello everyone, this is Evan Abrams, and in this After Effects tutorial, we're gonna rig up a little simple cartoon face that you can put on, I guess, just about anything. Now, don't be concerned, I haven't actually been turned into a pumpkin. It's not midnight yet. I'm just uh, getting into the Halloween spirit. We're gonna use only the tools inside After Effects. No plugins, no scripts, no extensions. Keeping it simple in this one. And we're using something that you might not touch unless you make templates. We're cracking open those master properties. This is gonna let us make one face and then reuse it in a bunch of places. Uh, like on this ball of rubber bands. Ooh, spooky rubber band monster over here. Whoa, boogans, boogans. I'm the ghost of like a thousand broccolis. Now, hopefully we can cover concepts that will make it easy for you to expand this to not just faces, but other kinds of rigged and reused pieces. And if you enjoy learning about After Effects, motion design, visual effects, subscribe to this channel and turn on those notifications so you know when things are happening. We've got new tutorials coming out all the time and we also do live stuff on here now. So don't miss out on all these cool tricks <laughs> and treats. Uh? All right, so we've got the After Effects open. We are ready to get into it. So. We're gonna go window and open up the essential graphics panel. We just wanna make sure this is open because this is how we get the master properties that allow us to create instances instead of just comps. What do I mean by unique instances? Well, in this example, in this scene with the pumpkin character and the rubber band monster, these are both instances of the same composition. These are both the face rig and they just happen to be hanging out, but they have different master properties. This one's mouth is moving, this one is not. We can change the eye shapes of one, that one stays the same. So what you do with master properties to one instance doesn't affect the other. This allows us to have multiple face rigs in a scene. You can put them on pumpkins, put them on rubber band people. You can just put them on a, a circle and a triangle character. These are uh, such good characters. I'm really nailing it with these things. But starting from scratch, you need to make a new composition. And while I usually skip over this part, it's worth mentioning you want your frame rate, if you are gonna be putting this onto footage, to be the same frame rate. So you wanna harmonize those ideas in general. And you wanna make sure that the canvas size is large enough, depending on how large or small you're gonna scale this thing. So if you think you'll eventually zoom in a lot, you'll probably wanna make it a lot larger than you anticipated. Always make it at the largest size you require. And then finally, duration, you wanna make sure that it will last as long as the composition. Certainly you can do things like time remapping, but to keep it simple, just make the duration super long. Problem solved. So in this face rig, we're gonna be creating some layers and then some controls over those layers. So before we get too far down the road, I wanna make sure I name this comp appropriately, the example, and should you download the project files for this, the cards are gonna come up and links in the description, blah, blah, blah. The example is, is what you'll find in there, the exact thing that we are making right now, rather than the thing from the intro, because that has more features than you really need to learn these techniques. So first, in your essential graphics panel, you're gonna open up the example here. So this is the face, and all the controls for this face are gonna go in here, in this space. So what do we need? Well, in general, let's focus on using eyes to convey emotion and mouths to just move around and be mouths. The first thing I wanna throw in here is a new null object. I wanna call this the reference point. And that is because I wanna parent a lot of other things to that reference point and doing so would make their position here in the middle zero comma zero, kind of like an origin if you're dealing with a 3D kind of program, rather than having the center of this be, in this case, half of the comp width and height. So now the center can be expressed as zero comma zero very easily, and it makes referencing things a lot easier. And I'm gonna make another one of those by just duplicating command D, control D, calling this the eyes control, and make another one called the mouth control. Now this is because you might want characters whose eyes and mouth get further apart. So having things reference them is gonna make that a little easier. So mouth control, I'm just gonna move down a little bit and eye control, I'm gonna move that up a little bit. Let's make some mouths. We're gonna be using a technique called symbol swapping, which is we're gonna make a bunch of individual layers for the various mouth shapes. And that might mean various expressions. That might mean uh, phonemic shapes. If you're gonna have this stand in for lip syncing. So you're gonna need all the f, uh, ah, uh, 
all of those shapes that the mouth is going to make, which might be kind of a seven figure system or five or 13, 21, whatever system you're gonna use, you need to draw all of those symbols, which I have done kind of accelerating through the process while I've been talking. You don't need to see me make shapes. You can be drawing them differently yourself. However you make the shapes, that's up to you. So we have these three mouth shapes. We're keeping it very simple for this. And your mouth shapes, you should parent them to your mouth control. This is pretty important because we're gonna be swapping between them. Their position relative to each other is essential. So if we take that mouth control, move it down a little bit, and let's look at the ooh, okay? And if we were to swap that for the line, does it make sense that those are the same mouth? Maybe. But the little smile, uh, not really. Why would the little smile be so low? So little smile, we want to bring that up a little bit. So we want to just make sure that this is in the correct position here relative to the other objects, such that when we're swapping between them, it, it doesn't seem incongruent that that would happen. And it's going to be very different for your character, depending on the design that you want for your mouths and such. But how do we swap between them? We need some controls. So I'm gonna make a new adjustment layer and we're gonna put some controls on that. Specifically some slider controls. So bring a slider out onto here. And this slider, I'm just gonna lock this layer in place so it doesn't go anywhere when we're doing other things. This slider control in here is gonna control which mouth we are seeing. So I'm gonna drag this down because part of what makes this system very easy is making use of the layer's index number, in this case, number one, two, three, to control which one is being seen. And we're gonna do it with an expression. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna call up the opacity hitting O, I'm gonna hold down Alt, click on that opacity. And the first thing I wanna say is variable S is equal to that slider, blah, 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 blah whatever that slider is. And then I'm gonna say if, and then we put in these parentheses, S is exactly equal to this layer dot index. So if S is equal to the number of this index, in this case, one, what should happen? We're gonna just type in 100. So if that thing we said, then you should be 100. Else, you should be zero. That's just how your life should be now. So now we can see if we solo that layer, as soon as the slider control goes one, this thing shows up. Okay, that's pretty good. You may want to clamp this value a little bit so that you're not just looking at one. You might want to go like, well, if this is 1.5, I'd still like to see it because if it has to be exactly one, there's a lot of precision. If you're making this for someone else, they might break it. You might do something like math.floor and then you're putting the math.floor parentheses around this situation so that you don't have to be as precise. So 1.5 will get you there. I like to put it here on the layer. Some people like to do it on the controller. So the controller is snapping. It's wide open, but math.floor and then whatever you put in those parentheses will be brought down to the, to the nearest whole number. It's not exactly rounding, but I prefer it. So we can now take this opacity thing and we can put it on these other two layers, copy and paste. So now as we cycle through mouth one, mouth two, and then mouth three, and I like to leave mouth zero as no mouth because you know, that's funny sometimes. But now we have these three mouths that we can go between. We now have to take this slider and we should rename it something like mouth shape. And we're gonna take that slider and drag it into our essential graphics and we'll just name it in here, mouth shape. And we'll add some formatting like a group and make this part of the mouth group. Now, if specifically you're using mouth shape in terms of lip sync, you would probably title this the lip sync. And you would also want to have a little post-it note or some kind of documentation to say which phoneme lines up with which number. We're doing something so basic, so simple here. I'm not even concerned about correct mouth shapes. I really just wanna show that the mouth is moving, but you can add more layers of complexity if you really want. But this technique of swapping, of symbol swapping, is also helpful if you wanna go between styles of lower thirds. Anytime you wanna swap between different layers, this is the method that I would recommend. So the other thing we would like this mouth to be able to do is to maybe move it up and down in relation to the middle of this thing, or maybe even left to right. So 
with our mouth control, we can just call up its position and drag that into the mouth group. And we can call this mouth position. So now you can kind of alter where that position is. But this number here doesn't make any sense. Five, 540, 680, well, this doesn't make any sense. So you should parent it to the reference point so that it's at zero, zero normally, and then you know how far away from that you are. This is a very useful concept in rigging because having things referencing a point that makes sense will allow later users to actually make use of it without becoming confused. So we've got our mouth, let's make some eyes. Let's make the first eye. Just double click here and we're gonna make an ellipse and maybe we'll have the eyes be like kind of beady, tiny eyes, I guess. And you have to make sure that when you're making new layers, because we are referencing the index values, that you put them below things because anything you put above will bump everybody's index value. And let's parent it to the eye control. So it'll be up here. And we probably wanna move the eyes horizontally. So let's get a slider going. And maybe we call this the, maybe we call this the eye distance, which would be the distance these eyes are from each other. In here, we can put an expression here, like variable, variable s again linking to that slider and then having an output of some kind it's going to be like s comma zero so as we increase this value it's going to move in that direction now you could duplicate to make i2 in here you would probably want negative s and it's moving in the opposite direction pretty pretty easy standard stuff so now if you want a character with wide set eyes, close set eyes, you can do that, which means we'll probably want a new group for these controls. Now, if we wanna show some emotion with these eyes, maybe we want them squinting or something, we would probably go into the eye and we might add, say, a rectangle path, and then we might add a merge paths, and we'll say wherever they intersect, that's what we're interested in. So now we could probably use this to squint if we wanted to squint, squint. Most of the things you'll wanna put a slider control with and then parent multiple objects to work off of that slider control and then use the slider control here in the essential graphics. So for example, this might be the squint amount and the squint amount you wanna express as let's say a value from 0% squinting to 100% squinting. If that's the case, then we need to put an expression here on the rectangle path size. We might say variable s is equal to the squint amount slider bar, semicolon to end that line. And then we might have to make a second variable, maybe x, which is going to remap that variable s. And we're gonna remap its zero to 100 inputs to something like 0, 50, which are the actual dimensions that we would want. Semicolon to end that. And then finally, we would have an output line that's something like, I don't know, 250 comma x. Now that means that the slider right now is remapping 0 to 0 and 100 to 50. That doesn't really make any sense because a squint of 100%, 100% squinting should be the closed eye. So you can just take these values and reverse them. So we're gonna remap 0 to 100 and we remap it to 50 comma 0. So then we would just need to copy these elements and then paste them into the other shape layer's contents so that now these things can squint together. Hmm, hmm. And again, you would just take your squint amount and put it here into the eyes. You can also edit the range of this, see it goes from zero to 100, such that it can never go beyond those values. It makes it very easy to control. Now the same trouble here happens with the distance. You would wanna edit the range of that to allow for as much distance <laughs> as you would require. Now you might add all sorts of other intense controls. I went ahead and added the ability to shift these wedges of the eye independently. I think that's more work than you really wanna get into. Just start playing with it and exploring and making interesting things because I need to show you how you would actually use this thing. Now we would do so by grabbing our example and we would just plop it down here on the timeline. Now you can resize this, you can attach it to tracking data, you can do all sorts of things. But I would recommend first in your essential graphics resetting a lot of these things to what is the default amount. Figure out what is what is gonna be the default for your values such that it makes sense to be the baseline to move from. 
So now I'm just going to take the example here. I'm going to parent it to Cecil the circle. Great. And I'll duplicate it and put another one on uh, Tina the triangle over here. Hey, what's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? So now we can scale them, squash them, move them over, do all kinds of whatever we would like to them. You can make them 3D. You can stick them to footage objects, stick them to a null. They track into the scene. But how we would use them is to then twirl down in, twirl into the master properties, and now you've got your mouth group, your eye group, and we can do all kinds of things in here. We can make Cecil squint. We can keyframe that if we want. And if we want to deal with the mouth shape, when we keyframe, you want to start using hold frames. So you just right click and you just toggle that to a hold frame. And so if you're going to do your lip sync with this, you would just start putting in all of your values for those. So we'll go to two, to three, and move, o move over a little bit, and then to two. This can be a bit of a manual process. When you have a character that is this simplistic, we'll say, whose face shapes don't necessarily have to line up super well, you can usually get away with just copying and pasting random, random segments of this, or using some kind of automation to make it happen, basing it off of what audio you have. Really, for me, I just took a look at the waveform and tried to make sure that some movement was happening while we could see that there were peaks and valleys of the audio, and it works out pretty well, then you have to usually go back and massage it a little bit. But those are the basics of how to do symbol swapping and how to create these rigs using the essential graphics. Hopefully this makes sense. And if you have any questions, please do let me know in the comments. If you want to get your hands on the project file that we use to make this thing, then by all means, use the link in the description, use the link in the cards, head on over to evanabrams.com and pick that thing up. It'll be just this example we worked on that is not that fancy. And hopefully these techniques take you further than just making faces. You can use these kinds of swapping and altering in these instances to create all kinds of reusable things. You can change pretty much any property inside those comps. So think about that when you are designing things that might be repeated or reused. We'll cover more about master properties on this channel. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy this kind of thing, please subscribe to this channel and make sure you turn on notifications so you actually know when things happen. If you have any questions or comments about this video, please leave them down below. I get to pretty much all of them when I have time. If you have questions about After Effects and motion design in general, please get at me on Twitter. I'm at EC Abrams on there. And if you do those things, I will see you around the internet. Thanks again for watching and have a great day.